This is the Volvo XC60, and it's a little bit like Prince Harry in the way that it's very posh and arguably even more likable than its bigger brother, the XC90. Now, it's cheaper than the XC90, so it starts from £37,000. Now, click up there, go to carwire.co.uk, and you can compare offers on the XC60. It's perfect if you're thinking about buying a car or a friend is. So on the inside, the thing that I really like is that it feels no less luxurious than the XC90. In fact, I think the dash design is actually better. Equipment levels are brilliant as well. So the entry level car has pretty much all you need. You've got this touch screen, you've got satellite navigation, there's heated seats, they're electric. I mean, the list goes on, full leather interior. If you go for the inscription, it has posher bits of trim, like super soft Napa leather seats. There's an R design version, which has sportier bits of trim. Then you can have pro versions of those, which have even more kit on them. And this is the inscription pro. So it's fully luxurious, fully posh, and it has things like, oh look, massage seats. And that brings me on to the infotainment system, which is fairly nice to use. Now on the XC60, they have made the icons a little bit bigger than on the infotainment system in the XC90. So they're easier to operate and hit while you're on the move. Now, if you click up there, you can actually see my in-depth infotainment video review for this car and find out more about the specification levels you can get with it. Now, I do still think the infotainment system isn't quite as easy to use as that in an Audi Q5 with a swivel wheel. Speaking of the Audi Q5, the quality is well, it's, it's not quite as good, but it's, it's so close that it doesn't really matter. In fact, even down here, you've got soft touch materials and you will touch that if you're going to be removing your large bottle from the door bin to illustrate how practical the car is. There's some more storage as well under here. Look, big cup holders that can hold this. There's some storage in there. Can't quite fit that in there. And there's a decent size glove box as well. Talking about decent size, let's move on to the back. So. The rear doors don't actually open quite as wide as you might think they do, but they're big enough. And I do think that this feels lovely in the back. So the seats are sculpted. There's loads and loads of knee room, loads of headroom. We've got a panoramic sunroof fitted here and they use the eat into headroom, but it doesn't matter in this car because it's just so tall. It's lovely here in the back. It's actually all right for carrying three abreast at once. This center seat is actually really squidgy and soft. It's, it's not too bad to travel in at all. Then there's some other bits and pieces like you've got this armrest here, a little tray and some storage there. And where are the cup holders I hear you ask? Well, ta-da, there they are. And there's some decent sized door bins as well here where you can fit like a 750 milliliter bottle if you want to. Hmm, it's all very nice. And look, flip up, eyes fix, anchor points. So when you fit a child seat, you won't lose those because they're not removable, which is handy. Perhaps the only gripe I have with this car is the fact that in terms of outright capacity, its boot is smaller than all its major SUV rivals. Still, you do get an automated tailgate as standard. And let's be honest, this boot is still big enough for most people and it's a nice usable square shape and there is absolutely no load lip at all. So you can just slide things in and out. There's various tethering points around the place. Plus, look, there's through loading for a ski hatch. I do have to do take this down first you can take your skis there you go and have two people either side so that's really useful and there's a 12 volt socket there for charging things such as mobile devices or for plugging in a vacuum cleaner for cleaning out the boot speaking of which it is a bit dirty this one let's have a look under here so look a space saver spare wheel you don't get that on all suvs these days i'll just fold the seats down and show you what you're left with i like the way that the headrests do just fold down when you do that look let me fold that out of the way, and then you've got a nice flat low bay, and it's dead easy then to just push items to the front and load it up. Now, if you click up there, you can see more details on this car's practicality, how much stuff you can fit in the boot, how easy it is to fit a child seat, what it's really like with three adults in the back. So, now we've looked round the car, let's see what it's like to drive. This XE60 is a lovely thing to drive in town. It's actually dead easy because the steering looks so nice and light, makes Maneuvers an absolute doddle. You sit up high as well and get a good view out. And this particular car is fitted with the air suspension. I can put it in comfort mode and it just, well, it just floats around actually. When you hit a pothole, there's maybe a bit more of a bump than you get in an Audi Q5 with air suspension, but still, for the most part, it's a very, very comfy car. The only problem when driving in town is, let's say you pull out at a roundabout and you suddenly need to accelerate. Finally. <laughs> The gearbox can be really, really slow to respond and it can leave you floundering, which is a shame because otherwise the gearbox is quite nice 
and relaxing. It just blends gears together very well. Now you could always put the car in dynamic mode and then it just makes the engine and gearbox more responsive. So when you put your foot down, yes, it does take off quicker. The only problem then is that it just feels less relaxing to drive because it's always holding on to too low a gear. So yeah, it's just always revving a bit too much the engine. Speaking of which, when you get out on the motorway and put your foot down, you will notice that the diesel engines in the Volvo are quite noisy compared to those that you get in something like a Audi Q5. Performance-wise, I can't fault this engine. It's the D5, so it's got lots of performance. Feels very quick, but you don't really need it. The D4, which is slightly less powerful, is good enough. This D5, it's supposed to do over 50 miles per gallon. I'm getting 37, which isn't so good, really. Now, if you don't want a diesel engine, you can get a turbo petrol or a plug-in hybrid, mm, which is fast and economical at the same time. So that's, that's a good thing. This is actually a lovely car to just do lots of miles in. I mean, it's super relaxing. The seats are very comfortable and it's quiet at speed. Perhaps the area where it falls down a little bit is the handling on a twisty road. So if you throw it into a bend, it does roll more than many other SUVs actually. And it just doesn't feel quite so precise to steer. It's not a big problem. It's just not as sporty as something like a Jaguar F-Pace. But does that really matter on a car like this? I don't think so. It doesn't bother me at all, actually, in any way, shape or form. Now, if you want more information on what this guy's like to drive, click up there to watch my point of view video test drive, which puts you into the driving seat. Now then, it's time for the car wow. Five annoying things about this car. The touchscreen soon gets covered in greasy fingerprints. It's especially bad if you've just had a KFC. That's why Volvo gives you this special little Volvo branded screen wiper. Look but you're forever doing that. The load cover is a bit of a faff. I'm not too keen the way it just retracts up there and then it's like that. And there's nowhere to, oh God, to put it in the back of the car. There's no space under there, so you have to just leave it here. And it takes up a lot of room. One language, but some room. I love this light trim so much. It's super cool, but it just gets dirty too easy and then it's, it's almost impossible to clean. It won't come out. Oh no, OCD meltdown. People in the back will find it a little bit annoying that the windows don't go all the way down, so you can't really rest your arm out like that. Hmm. Even if you've got your phone connected to the car via Bluetooth, it doesn't often pick it up through the Bluetooth player, so you have to reconnect the device. Look, it says no Bluetooth device, yet my phone says it's all connected, and it is. Oh, no, no, no. Ah. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the car wow five cool features. The glorious bird's eye view camera really helps you navigate tight spaces. It's such high resolution, lovely. Look at the graphics on that. Don't get too distracted, otherwise you'll end up not looking where you're going. Nope. With the Volvo Encore phone app, you can actually monitor your car remotely and do things such as flash the lights, you can sound the horn, <laughs> and you can even remote start the car. Brilliant. Just hope no one steals it now. If you have a car fitted with air suspension, you can manually lower it from the boot, make it easy to load things in. Also, when you get out of the car, it automatically lowers the whole air suspension to make it easier to get into next time. If you have the pilot assist, a camera can read the lines in the road and it'll auto steer the car to keep you in lane. There you supposed to get your hands on the wheel, otherwise it will disengage. Also, the radar cruise control will automatically brake the car, even right down to a complete standstill, which just takes the strain out of stop-start traffic. And then when the car ahead moves off, it'll start it back up again. Look, it's doing the steering as well at the same time. And I'll tell you what, this takes the sting out of long journeys. It's brilliant. You should have this fit into this car. I tell you, it's I love it. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can go to carwire.co.uk to see the deals you can get on a Volvo XC60. So then, my verdict on this car, should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the XC60. It's a really good SUV. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on our logo to subscribe to the channel. Also, click on the video windows to see more of our great videos.
Just a quick word of warning, I'm driving on a closed test track. You're not supposed to use the pilot assist and take your hands off the wheel. Volvo don't condone it and they'll probably tell me off for illustrating the system working without my hands on the wheel. But really, that's the only way to show the steering wheel working without me touching it. Sorry, Volvo.